If we are to see the birds of streams and rivers, there is no better way than to use a canoe. Silent, this light craft takes you close to the birds without disturbing them. A number of birds like the belted kingfishers, various kinds of herons, the avocet, the red-backed sandpiper, and the glossy ibis are accustomed to the food in the water and the shelter of the overhanging trees. These are water lilies, which are dependent for their growth upon the calm water, where they may float their huge leaves in waxy blossoms, and upon a rich, mucky bottom in which to sink their stout root stalks. The kingfisher is waiting quietly on a perch above the water, watching intently for the appearance of a fish. Once the fish is seen, the bird will plunge quickly into the water after it. When there are young in the bird's dark burrow, it faithfully supplies them with fish. Here, with a fish in its beak, the kingfisher disappears out of sight in the burrow, then soon reappears backward. Note that the kingfisher's head is unusually large for its size. Its feet are small and weak. It has practically no tongue. The only way to examine a kingfisher nest without harming it is to dig down to it from the top of the bank. Kingfishers have large families. Four have already been removed, and they still continue to appear. Five, six, seven, seven altogether. And when they walk, they walk backward. The young kingfisher is an ungainly creature, being one-third head. Bewildered when brought into the light, they permit themselves to be lined up in a row. These young birds are still not ready to leave the nest. They must be completely feathered. The feathers of the wings are still unsheathed, and his feet have no grasping power. Herons are among the most picturesque birds of the streams and rivers. This bird, a little blue heron, is white the first year, but red and blue thereafter. The food of herons consists largely of frogs, fish, and numerous small animals. Here a little blue heron catches a frog. Herons feed by wading deeply with their long legs, searching for prey, reaching them with their long necks, and spearing them with their long bills. So there is good reason for the long legs, neck, and bill. The black-crowned night heron is found the world over. It is called night heron because it does much of its feeding at dusk. Like young kingfishers, Young herons remain in the nest under the constant care of their parents. With the exception of bitterns, herons are tree-nesting birds. Their crude platforms of sticks are loosely constructed. Herons usually nest in colonies. There may be several hundred nests in a colony. The sounds coming from a heron colony are harsh and almost deafening. The young birds are slow growing and remain in their nests for many days. These are young green herons. When about half grown, young herons will often walk out of their nests, if disturbed, and climb about easily on the branches. They use not only their huge feet for support, but they use also their wings and necks for reaching and holding on to branches. If by chance they should fall from the tree into the water, they can swim readily.
When fully grown, green herons have this appearance. The greenish sheen of the back plumage gives the birds their name. The green heron is no larger than a bantam hen. It can, at times, look very chubby by drawing its head down on its shoulders. But generally, its head is extended, revealing the long, slender neck. The conspicuous glassy eyes of the heron are projected from the head in such a way the bird is able to see enemies above and straight ahead and to watch for prey below. There are no feathers found between the bill and eye, a characteristic of heron. Ibises, such as this glossy ibis, are somewhat like herons but have down-curved bills. Their habits are similar to herons. To observe the birds of lakes and ponds, walk along the shores. During the spring and fall, hordes of migrating waterfowl gather on the water surface. At sunset, one may hear the calls of loons, ducks, geese, and swans, and sometimes see their shadowy forms. Invariably, other things such as this tiger swallowtail are found. This is because waves continually wash up foods preferred by animals. Decomposing waste material is often attractive to butterflies. Usually we think of butterflies as preferring the nectar of flowers. Waves wash up insects and other kinds of animals that have fallen on the water surface. Such food brings shorebirds. An unusual shorebird is the avocet. It has long legs for wading into water to pick up food and a thick waterproof plumage to give it protection in case it gets wet. It has an upturned bill that is especially useful for sweeping up small animals in the shallow water. The avocet is found in western United States. No other bird looks anything like it. There are nearly 50 different kinds of shorebirds in North America. Here is another kind, the red-backed sandpiper. The red-backed sandpipers, like the majority of shorebirds, nest in the far north and are seen commonly here only during the spring and fall migration. A few shorebirds, however, remain here to nest. These large birds are Canada geese. Geese are primarily vegetarian and, though watchful for danger, boldly come shoreward to feed on the roots and seeds of plants beneath the water surface. By tipping up in the water, they are able to reach the food with their long necks. Like the swans, ducks, and loons, they are web-footed birds and good swimmers. In spite of their great size, they can dive when very hard pressed by an enemy. Canada geese are favorites of sportsmen and all lovers of the outdoors. Ducks are of two kinds. The surface feeders with habits similar to those of geese and the divers, such as this lesser scop duck. Scops get their food by diving deep in the water. Of all water birds, ducks are undoubtedly the best light. Not only are they desirable as game, but they are always amusing to watch. Notice how this bird manages to scratch himself even though swimming. For a duck, it is a simple matter. 